Hey guys, in this video we will see how we can use the Freshworks Developer Kit to create a simple Hello World application. In the previous video, we saw how we can install the FTK and we got it running. Before we begin, we need to have these three prerequisites satisfied. One is the FTK, the other is having a trial Freshdesk account and the third one is HTML, JavaScript and CSS skills. This is what we'll be doing in today's tutorial. We'll use the FTK to generate a sample app from one of the boilerplates. And we will refer the documentation and add a sample feature to our application. To be specific, this would be the notification feature that we'll be adding to the Hello World app. And we'll also go through the app that we created and understand the structure of the app. So let's get started. I'll open the terminal and run the FTK create command to create a sample app from the boilerplate. So it shows a list of products for which I can create a sample app. So I'm going to choose the product, so in which case fresh desk and I'll choose one of the templates. So I, I can create a simple front-end application or I can create a serverless application or I can proceed to use a demo application. So let's start with having a simple front-end application and let's see what happens. So it has successfully created the app from the boilerplate as you could see in this pane over here. Let's quickly understand the app structure before we start developing the app. Let us start with the manifest.json. The manifest.json mentions for which product the app is getting created and the location details where the app will be rendered. For example, in this case, the app will be rendered in the ticket sidebar location. For a list of other locations, you can refer the Freshdesk developer documentation or the corresponding documentation for the Freshworks product. For serverless applications, the manifest.json also specifies the node package dependencies that the app will be using. We'll see that in the later videos. The app directory contains all resources pertaining to the front end of the application. The config directory contains all the necessary installation parameters that the app would require during the time of installations. The installation parameters are the usual parameters which we will be filling up during the time of app installation. So they will be defined in the iparams.json and the test data for the same installation parameters can be provided in the iparams test data.json. The readme, as you know, contains a readme for the application. If you are submitting a public app, it is good to provide a proper description in the readme file so that the review can take place really fast. Apart from the usual directories and the files we saw, there is this .ftk directory and .report.json which are concerned with code coverage metrics. We don't have to worry about them at this point. Until now, we have seen how to create an app using the FDK. Now let's switch back to the browser into the Freshdesk account. I have my Freshdesk account already created and if you haven't created already, please create one. Once you have created, go to the tickets page and have a dummy ticket created. In my case, I have a dummy ticket created here. Running the app is quite simple. I just need to hit the FDK run command and it will start the local server which serves the app to the product. As you can see here, the FTK run command has successfully started the local server and all we need to do is to append the dev true to the ticket URL. If you notice the top right corner of your browser, you will see an alert shield thrown by the Chrome browser stating that the product is trying to load insecure content. Well, we don't have to worry about in this case because it's being served by the local testing server which was started during the FTK run. So I have allowed it temporarily and if you notice the bottom right corner of the window, you would see the title of the app. And if I click that, you would see the sample app being rendered here. As I said earlier, we can confirm this by looking at the app directory which hosts the front-end part of the application. So the template.html, which you might have noticed in the manifest.json, acts as the view part. And the icon is the icon.svg, which we have also specified here. So if I make any changes to the HTML here, the view gets affected. For example, as you see here, the changes are being reflected. If you take a closer look here, you would notice that we have the fresh client.js included in the template.html. 
in a gist the fresh client includes the client object which is responsible for the communication between the app and the product as you see here the app is rendered within an iframe and it has to communicate back to the product and to facilitate this we have the fresh client.js which acts as the interface without this an iframe content cannot uh, co the content which is rendered within an iframe cannot talk to the product the client object exposes several apis from which the app can benefit from so those would include the data storage apis the request apis and so on we'll see more about them in the upcoming videos now that we have run the boilerplate app successfully let's refer the documentation and add a simple notification feature to the application i'll jump back to the developer documentation and refer the api which is responsible for the notifications if you look at the left pane of the documentation you would have the apis listed by the level of complexity so now that i need to interface with the parent i'll have a look at the interface apis and as you see here the interface apis has all the methods which are responsible for communication with the parent so since i need notifications I'll refer the notification section and it has this snippet i can copy this and then i can paste it directly in the application and I'll have the notification feature. As you already noticed, our application uses the client object and the APIs exposed by the client object are asynchronous in nature. So we will do a quick modification to the notification API. And we will see how it reflects back in the product. So this is the app that we have here and I'm going to close and here we go. As you notice here to the top right corner of the window you would see a notification and this is because of the notification feature that we added. So to explain this simply let's jump back to the code. We have the app initialized and in the app activated lifecycle event which is getting triggered every time we click on the app title we have the notification triggered so before the notification is getting triggered if you notice we also get the contact information and in that we have the ticket creator contact obtained using the data api so instead of just showing the message here i can also make the notification a little bit dynamic and here we go the bit of spacing change you have the perfect notification so there we go we saw how we can create a simple app using the FDK we also saw how to run it and then we added a simple notification feature to the application and we got it running. Stay tuned for the upcoming videos. Thanks.